Why do you feel differently after drinking tea than you do after drinking coffee? It's not that coffee has more caffeine, as many Japanese green teas have even more caffeine than coffee. The difference comes down to a little amino acid called theanine. In this video, we're going to explain what theanine is, where it comes from, and why it makes tea so unique in the world of caffeinated beverages. You may hear the phrase calm and alert be thrown around by tea drinkers. They report that drinking tea gives them energy, but also makes them feel calm at the same time. How is this even possible? The reason is that the caffeine and theanine in green tea are working in synergy. L-theanine is an amino acid that's only found in two different plant species, and one of them is the tea plant. This compound was identified by a team of researchers studying tea leaves in Kyoto as recently as 1950. Even though it's a relatively new discovery, we are already starting to understand a bit about the effect that it can have on the body. The first people to drink green tea in Japan were the monks. They found that this drink helped them stay calm and focused during long periods of meditation, but didn't quite understand why. We now know that the caffeine in the tea functions as a stimulant, blocking the adenosine receptors and making the body feel less tired. There are some side effects of caffeine which you'll be all too familiar with if you've ever drinking too many cups of coffee, and these negative side effects are apparently buffered by the theanine. Theanine appears to slow the absorption of caffeine, giving you a longer lasting energy throughout the day, without the crash or the jitters you might get from coffee. It can also induce a calming effect on the brain and stimulate alpha brainwave activity, the same brainwave stimulated during meditation. This is why drinking a cup of tea can almost feel like a moment of meditation. But where does this theanine come from? The theanine is actually produced naturally in the tea plant. When the tea plant is exposed to sunlight, it actually converts the theanine into catechins as a protection against the UV light. These can be great for protecting the tea plant, but they can actually produce a bitter taste in the final tea. If a farmer wants to minimize the bitterness of a tea and maximize the sweet and savory theanine, he can cover the tea plants in a special type of netting before the harvest. This protects the tea plant from sunlight and allows the leaves to maintain more of their theanine. So which teas are highest in L-theanine? That would be the teas that are shaded for the longest time. If a farmer is producing a normal sencha tea, he will either leave it unshaded, which is far more common, or shade it for just about a week to take the edge off. If a farmer is producing a kabuse sencha, he will shade the tea plant for between 10 and 20 days. These teas have an incredibly sweet flavor with more caffeine and theanine than a typical green tea. Where it really starts to get interesting is when it comes to the most premium Japanese green teas, gyokuro and matcha. These teas need to be shaded for three weeks or more prior to the harvest. This alters the chemical composition of the tea leaves, producing more caffeine, more theanine, and more chlorophyll. Gyokuro, also referred to as the emperor's tea, is a celebration of these sweet and savory flavors. The tea brews up a thick, dense liqueur packed with flavor. It is actually considered the highest caffeine leaf tea, with as much as 130 milligrams of caffeine per serving. Matcha, on the other hand, is ground into a fine powder and then mixed directly into water. This concentrates the flavor and the health benefits of the tea as you are consuming the entire leaf, rather than just an extraction. If you're looking for a tea that's high in theanine, it's recommended that you go for either a gyokuro or a matcha. These teas will pack quite a bit of caffeine, but it's well balanced by the theanine. The people that drink these teas say that it gives them a long-lasting energy throughout the day. You may not feel the same jolt as you do with coffee, but overall it's a much more sustainable energy. Before we mention the word savory, which is a common descriptor when it comes to foods, but what does it mean in the context of tea? Because amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, they can sometimes have this savory or almost brothy taste. This may sound off-putting, but it's actually really celebrated not only in Japanese cuisine, but in Japanese tea as well. Farmers work very hard to create this unique flavor characteristic in a tea like gyokuro, and these teas are often evaluated by how well they're able to capture the savory flavor profile. And it all happens thanks to theanine. If you'd like to try some of this legendary gyokuro tea for yourself, you can find it on our website neoteas.com. We make sure to source our tea from talented farmers like Mr. Sakamoto, who produce premium green tea without the use of pesticides or chemicals. These gyokuro teas are a great way to explore the taste and the effects of L-theanine for yourself, and it makes the best hands-on lesson. I hope you've all found this video helpful when it comes to explaining what theanine is. If you like this video, please help us out by hitting the thumbs up button, sharing it with a friend, or subscribing so that you can see more tea videos in the future. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to tea, so if you like this one, one, you're sure to love some of the others. If you have any questions about theanine or green tea in general, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.